Our next speaker is a leader in the open source community. Uh, she is the executive director of the Cloud Foundry Foundation, uh, has been working in technology for uh, 20 years, and is here to talk to us today about the role of open source in uh, companies that are transforming themselves through software development, the key uh, to, of interoperability in that process. Please welcome to the stage Executive Director of the Cloud Foundry Foundation, Abby Kearns. Ni hao. <laughs> Done. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for coming for the last day of LC3. It's great to see all of you. I'm super excited to be in Beijing, even though it's a little bit warm this week. Today I want to talk about cloud and, and how it's changing all of our worlds. But first I wanted to take you on a little bit of a journey. Have you ever made a choice that changed your life? Maybe gone on a trip that opened your mind, like the Great Wall. Or taking a new job that launched your career. Recently, I made a choice. I chose to stop going to my bank. In fact, I moved all of my money to a new bank, a new bank that's digitally native from day one. It was simple, easy to use, and it put me in control. Control over my time, control over my money. But if you're a traditional bank, customers like me scare you. They make you nervous. I'm willing to move all of my money to a new bank because it's easy to use, because of the technology. I chose my new bank because of the way that it used the cloud. And like so many industries, they're moving into the cloud. Banks are in the cloud, retail is in the cloud, even pizza delivery is in the cloud. Everything is moving their industries to the cloud. And organizations around the world are now having to piece together solutions to make that work. They're pulling together a variety of vendors, technologies, and solutions. And it's complicated and it makes you know, how do you know where to choose? How do you know which direction to go? And fundamentally, how do you know the impact that's going to have on your existing business? And if you're thinking about the cloud, what do you, what do you really, what comes to mind? What comes to mind is I need to innovate. I need to come up with new ideas and get those into production as quickly as possible. Oh, and at the same time, this new and innovative technology needs to work with what I have. And all of this needs to come together in a single solution. And cloud native technologies and cloud native applications are just growing. Over the next 18 months, we're going to see a 100% increase in the number of cloud native applications organizations are writing and using. And in China alone, there is a, a massive increase in the investments of these technologies. So not just investing in IT anymore, you're investing in cloud and cloud technologies. And for those of you in China, you're thinking about also how does this map to the new and innovative industries that are part of the Made in China 2025 initiatives. For each and every one of you, your world has gotten really big. The work you need to do and to be successful has gotten really big and really complicated. For those of you that are CIOs, you're thinking, how do I do more with what I have, be innovative, and keep an eye to where the future is, all while saving money? 
If you're an operator or an architect, you're thinking about how do I build the infrastructure that supports my future needs and helps me get to where I need to go. And for the developers, you're the ones that are changing your company's future. You're the ones that are developing the new applications that are going to allow your organizations to be competitive. So each and every one of your jobs have gotten harder. But what if we could make it easier? Imagine what we could all collectively solve together. And that's something we talk a lot about with Cloud Foundry, but it really remains true for open source. Collectively, the capabilities that we can bring to bear around cloud are way more powerful through open source. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with Cloud Foundry, we're an open source platform as a service. And I spend a lot of time talking about the architecture and the technology and how it all works together and the value it brings. But ultimately, what I'm really talking about for the organizations that are using it is digital transformation. The ability for your organizations to become software companies, to write, develop code, and get it into production as quickly as possible. And that's any code and on any cloud. And for each of you, you're constantly trying to figure out how do I become more responsive to my customers and their needs are changing. How do I innovate more? And ultimately, how can I fail faster? How can I get new ideas out into the market and iterate on those ideas over and over again? And that's really where the power of cloud is enabling us to do each and every one of those at a much bigger scale and faster. But what does the future look like? If you're thinking about what does that investment look like and how does it manifest, I've got a couple of examples. For Volkswagen, a car company is no longer just a car company. In fact, a car no longer just gets you from point A to point B. It's a connected mobile device. It's full of sensors and data, and the automotive industry is changing and changing quickly. For Volkswagen, they realized they needed to build out a development team they didn't have in-house. They needed to develop applications that could take advantage of not just one cloud, but many clouds. And they needed to do that across 12 different brands. And they've invested in Cloud Foundry and cloud native technologies to help them do that. Because at the end of the day, it's about the applications that extend that car through mobile apps, supply chain management, all of that pulled together to bring a single, concise experience for the automotive industry. Or one of my favorites is the US Air Force, the military. Now, when you think about the military, you don't necessarily think of agile or fast moving or even bleeding edge technology. The Air Force had a massive technology budget, but yet 70% of that budget was going to just maintaining the existing infrastructure. Only 30% was going to new R&D and new software. For the Air Force, they implemented agile practices and started taking advantage of the cloud and started developing applications to run in a cloud and on multiple clouds. And for them, these small changes allowed them to change the way they allocated their time and money. They were able to get applications out the door in weeks and months instead of years. And they were able to switch that spend and that investment so that 70% of their budget now goes to R&D and 30%
goes to maintaining the existing infrastructure. And in the process, they also saved 600 million US dollars in one year. So for them, it represented the ability to move quickly, but also to save time and money. Or Home Depot, a brick and mortar that actually sells brick and mortar. For them, as part of the retail industry, they were being disrupted by some of the biggest e-commerce sites. For a company like Home Depot that helps homeowners do work, they were actually being disrupted by Amazon, who sold more hammers than they did in one year. And they needed to figure out how to compete in a space on the cloud with cloud-native applications and how to iterate and develop those applications quickly. And so they invested in a platform and made that shift to continuous delivery and were able to move thousands of applications to both public and private clouds and allow them to iterate on those applications quickly. In fact, Home Depot went from spending six weeks to develop one app and get it into production, to now they deploy to production every 15 minutes. So they are constantly developing new applications and constantly deploying those in production. And so when I think about the power of the cloud, power of platforms like Cloud Foundry or even cloud-native architectures, what does that actually mean? It means the ability for you to create new ideas and get them into production as quickly as possible. But one of the most exciting things about Cloud Foundry, or even every project talked about here at LC3, is that it's open source. Open source provides an opportunity for us to all collectively work together. It brings together diverse minds, diverse organizations, diverse people to drive real innovation. And that's what makes open source so powerful. And the Linux Foundation is home to every major cloud-native technology, with projects like Cloud Foundry, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and Open Container Initiative. We're excited to be part of an open source movement a movement that's allowing developers like you to create applications in the cloud and take advantage of these cloud-native technologies. So today, I'd like to leave you with a couple of asks. Contribute to the project. Get involved in the open source community and be part of that. Bring your ideas to the table. Get training. Get certified, take training, learn how to develop cloud-native applications, how to run cloud-native platforms, and how to be part of this shift. And finally, join a community. Have your voices be heard. Be part of the conversation. Be a member and be part of it because there's a ton of opportunity that exists in open source, and each and every one of you bring that opportunity to China. So today I leave you with the choices in your hands to have control, control over how you spend your time, and control over how you invest in the future of cloud native. So good luck. Shishin.